Winter is here and by now you're starting to feel the biting chill of the season, I'm sure in your home and in those rising gas and electricity bills. And like so many of us, you just wanna find out some ways to keep those bills to a minimum. So in this video, I have about 15 tips to help you keep those heating costs down while still keeping you nice and comfortable through the winter season. Hi, I'm Joy of Frugal Creative Living. And when it comes to staying warm and cozy on a budget, the first thing you want to take care of in your home is insulation. In your home, there might be spots where you can feel air actually blowing into your house. Years ago, it was so drafty in my bedroom that we could literally smell the cold coming in around the windows. And one thing we had to do and that you can do is seal up any drafts that you might have around your windows and doors. Now you can use weather stripping and draft stoppers. There's also a number of DIY options that you can try. You can make some cheap draft blockers by just filling old socks with rice or beans and putting them at the bottom of your external doors. You can also attach a strip of Velcro to keep it on the door so that when you go out of the house, the draft blocker is still doing its job. For DIY window insulation, you can caulk up any gaps or cracks that you see around the window. And if you're having a hard time identifying exactly where the gaps are, that maybe they're not as easy to see, you can use a lighter and just slowly move around the edges of the window. And if the flame blows when you reach a certain area, then you know that's a spot that you need to seal up. You can also just dampen your your finger or your hand and move it around the window and when you feel that extra coolness on your hand you know that's a spot that you can seal up as well and you can also use bubble wrap or clear plastic film just to cover the windows completely you can use the plastic drop cloths that people put down when they're painting and if it's really drafty like it was in my house when you put that plastic up you're going to see and hear that plastic blowing a lot which is letting you know just how much air it really is blocking now it kind of can get noisy also with that constant shushing of the plastics. So we started getting the shrink to fit plastic insulation kits for our windows, which helped to reduce that extra movement of the plastic. Because what you do is you put the plastic up on the outer edges of the window, the strips of tape that comes with the kit, and then you use a blow dryer to shrink the plastic so that it's tight and then it's not doing all that blowing back and forth with the draft. Another issue that could be coming up for you is poor wall insulation. If you feel the inside of your external walls, which are those walls that separate the inside of your house from the outside of your house, when you feel those walls, if they feel cold to you, then you might have poor wall insulation. And the only way to really know if what the insulation is like in your walls is to open it up and take a look. But short of doing that, one of the things that we did in our back rooms where that was an issue was we stapled flannel blankets to the walls. You can use flannel, you can use a quilt maybe that you're not using anymore. There are also some more decorative options that people use where you can install carpet to the wall, creating a nice focal wall, or even use a kind of a faux grass. And it's used as a design element, but it can also help your room to retain the heat and give you a nice interior insulation option. Then as an additional measure, it might be helpful to move Move your couches away from those external walls if you have them there, especially if you have leather furniture because the cold walls will make your seating a little colder than if they're away from those colder areas. And we used to have a leather couch or a leather couch and it would always be cold. So we got a huge throw blanket that was about the same color as the couch and we would just cover the sofa with that and it helped to keep it warm. And then years later when the leather started to peel and crack, we just got cloth sofa covers, which also added to the warmth in the living room. So having a cloth sofa cover could also be another option for you um, if you do have leather furniture. Another tip is that since homes can lose a lot of heat through the window panes themselves because the glass itself is thin, a one inexpensive way to help retain the heat is to hang both blinds and thermal insulating curtains or blackout curtains. Or you can do what I did in my son's room, which was buy a $4 piece of flannel from Walmart and use some hem tape to create the casing for the rod. The flannel helps to retain the heat on the room side and block the cold on the window side. And the blinds just offer an additional layer of draft blockage. You can also do the same for your home entryways by just hanging heavy blankets over the doors to reduce or prevent drafts. 
Now, after you've gone through and insulated your home, your next step can be to insulate yourself. Just try wearing multiple layers of clothing to help keep you warm when you're in the house. Remember, it is winter. I know a lot of times people wanna walk around in their homes in their shorts and t-shirts and underwear, and that's fine because you want to be as comfortable as possible. But if it's winter time and you wanna keep your heating expenses down, you have to layer up. And you can keep on that t-shirt, but just maybe throw a nice card again over top of it and put on some thick socks and slippers stock up on some fleece lined sweatshirts or hoodies and sweatpants and you can grab your favorite knit sweaters a plush fuzzy robe and all of these can help to keep you warm when you want to keep the thermostat and the temperature of the house low another energy efficient way to keep warm is to use an electric blanket and i typically use mine when i'm just sitting up watching a movie or just relaxing in the living room it also kind of does double duty if you have any aches and pains and for me it just relaxes my muscles it's almost like having a heat massage but if you don't have an electric blanket you can also try using a hot water bottle or a microwavable heat pack and if you don't have one of those you can soak some hand towels or dish towels in steaming hot water fold them up and put them in a gallon size ziploc bag and then just bundle up with it to stay warm without turning up the thermostat so now that everything and everybody is well insulated, you can actually focus on putting heat into the house without worrying about it just drifting outside. So if you have a centralized heating system, you should consider getting a programmable thermostat. And particularly if you are away from home for lots of hours each day, it's a great way to make sure that you're not running the heat when you don't actually need it. So the way programmable thermostats work is that you can set different temperatures for different times of the day based on your schedule and at night while you're in your bed all cozy under your warm covers you can keep the temperature of the house lower and then have it set to automatically increase the heat as it's nearing the time when you know you have to get up in the morning now i know from myself it is particularly difficult to get up in the morning when it feels cold outside of my covers. So I set the thermostat to increase the temperature about a half an hour prior to the time that I know I have to get up so that I'm met with more warmth and then I'm ready to get up and start my day. Also, if you work outside of the home, you can set the thermostat to automatically reduce the heat so that that eight, nine, 10 hours that you're outside of the house, less energy is being used and it's keeping your costs down. Another tip is to maximize the sunlight in your home wherever possible. Just open up those curtains, open the blinds during the day to let in that natural sunlight because it is offering you free heat. When the sun is shining brightly through your windows, that means there's less cold coming through the window at that time. So it's completely safe to have the curtains open and the blinds open. Then at night, you just close those curtains back up to help retain the warmth inside the house. Another way you can optimize your heating resources is to lower the thermostat of your house and just use space heaters strategically throughout the home. When I was single, I would keep my thermostat temperature low. And side note, low is a relative word when it comes to heating your home. Low for me might not be low for you and low for you might not be low for me. But low for me is around 65 degrees. So I would have just two space heaters. One I kept in the hallway on the second floor and I just had the bathroom door and my bedroom door open and then I kept one in the living room downstairs. And then when I just needed to spend any length of time in some other room, I would just move the space heater to that room. Overall, it costs much less to keep the whole house thermostat low Low, and then just run the two space heaters so I'm only really heating the space I'm in. Also for space heaters, for many of them, you can adjust the thermostat on the space heater. You can either keep it on the highest setting, which means it's just gonna be running continually, or you can turn the dial to about three quarters of the way. The heater's gonna turn itself off and on to maintain just that temperature, which means that you're also saving a little bit more on electricity. Now, if your home has radiators, you can install reflective panels behind the radiators to direct the heat into the room. And this is especially helpful if you have radiators on any external walls because heat naturally gravitates toward the cold spaces and cold surfaces. So that reflective panel is gonna bounce the heat back into the room instead of the heat being absorbed by the wall. And you can buy pre-made radiator reflective panels or you can make your own just by wrapping and smoothing heavy duty kitchen foil around a piece of plastic plywood and then placing it behind the radiator. 
Humidifiers are also really useful for adding heat to your home, particularly in small or enclosed rooms. It's not necessarily going to replace a whole space heater, but the additional steam and moisture will remain in the air while the door is closed and it won't increase your energy bills as much. Also, because the air is already so dry in the winter and it's cold in flu season, the moisture that's produced by the humidifier is really helpful for keeping the sinuses open and adds to your comfort overall. Now, finally, if you are someone who is living on a low income and you're really struggling to pay your heating bills, there are government programs that have been set up and designed to assist you with grants that can cover a portion of your gas or electric bills this winter. They pay directly to the utility company for you. Just go to usa.gov forward slash benefits to learn more about how you can apply for assistance. Please take advantage of the programs that are out here. They're there to help you when you need it the most. Now, if this video has been helpful to you in any way, I'd love to hear from you in the comments about what some of your takeaways were. Please give the video a like by hitting that thumbs up icon, subscribe to the channel. Please stay warm this winter and I will see you in the next video. Bye.